Hi, my name is Jennifer Kern Schleva, and I'm one of the co authors on a manuscript entitled Management of Antipsychotic Treatment Discontinuation and Interruptions Using Model Based Simulations. Schizophrenia affects slightly over 1% of the population over the age of 18 with estimates of 51 million people suffering from schizophrenia worldwide. It ranks as one of the top 10 causes of disability in developed countries worldwide. Fortunately, schizophrenia is treatable with antipsychotic medications and psychosocial therapies. Unfortunately, despite the availability of effective medications, patients are often less than fully adherent with their treatment. It has been estimated that the one-year treatment interruption or complete discontinuation rate with antipsychotic agents ranges between 40 and 70 percent. Reasons for treatment interruption or discontinuation vary widely and can range from a schizophrenia-associated lack of insight into their condition and the importance of their medication to being forgetful, wanting to avoid adverse events, or just making a conscious choice to stop treatment. For the patient, the interruption or complete discontinuation of antipsychotic therapy is associated with a substantial increase in the risk for relapse or hospitalization. For the clinician, reinitiating antipsychotic treatment in a patient who has interrupted or completely discontinued their treatment is based on several factors, including the therapeutic agent, whether it was orally administered or long-acting injectable formulation, and the duration of treatment interruption. In this article, my co-investigators and I performed pharmacokinetic model-based simulations to analyze what would happen to the active moiety plasma concentration profiles of the long-acting injectable and oral formulations of paliperidone and risperidone following one week of treatment interruption, four weeks of treatment interruption, or complete treatment discontinuation. Paliperidone and risperidone share a common pharmacodynamic relationship in that paliperidone is the metabolite of risperidone, with both of these being active moieties. As illustrated in this simulation of treatment discontinuation, long-acting injectable formulations of paliperidone palmitate and risperidone provided longer durations of the active moiety concentrations than their oral counterparts. Paliperidone palmitate exhibited the slowest active moiety concentration decline, with risperidone long-acting injection being next, and the oral agents having a rapid decline to near zero within a week. For a variety of reasons, patients may often have interruptions in their medication treatment. This next simulation depicts the active moiety concentrations over time with a one-week short-term interruption in treatment. As in the previous simulation, rapid declines in active moiety concentrations occur with the oral agents, and steady state levels resume after a few days of treatment reinitiation. Risperidone long-acting injection has a unique release profile. There is no substantial immediate release following its administration. The main release of drug does not occur until week three following injection. Therefore, this delayed release results in an active moiety decline four to five weeks after a one-week treatment interruption. On the other hand, reinitiation of paliperidone palmitate produced a near immediate reattainment of steady state active moiety concentrations. This next simulation depicts the active moiety concentrations over time with a four-week, longer-term interruption in treatment. After a four-week treatment interruption, nearly a week was required for reattainment of steady-state active moiety concentrations with oral paliperidone or risperidone. The delayed release characteristic of risperidone long-acting injection requires three weeks of supplementation with oral risperidone when injectable treatment is initiated for the first time or following a four-week treatment interruption. The use of oral risperidone supplementation with reinitiation of risperidone long-acting injection 
results in a re-establishment of steady-state active moiety concentrations after a few days. However, there was a short-term decline between weeks 7 and 8. On the other hand, reinitiation of paliperidone palmitate using two doses administered one week apart without any oral antipsychotic supplementation displayed a rapid reattainment of active moiety concentrations. In summary, through these visual simulations, we hope that you become better able to conceptualize the impact of non-adherence on plasma concentrations and the impact of medication-specific reinitiation strategies after intermittent non-adherence. The findings of these model-based simulations indicate that longer windows of active moiety concentrations occur for clinicians to intervene in the event of non-adherence to manage the delayed decreases in plasma concentration with long-acting injectable formulations of paliperidone and risperidone. Thank you for your interest, and we hope that you find our analyses useful in the management of your patients who are receiving antipsychotic agents.